the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The first lesson is from the third chapter of Genesis. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, and dust thou art, and dust shall you return. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The second lesson comes from the 22nd chapter of Genesis. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And they shall, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Thanks be to God. The third lesson is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom in order to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God. lesson is from the 11th chapter of Isaiah. 
And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the understanding and the fear of the Lord. With righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity of the meek of the earth. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, and their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. fifth lesson is from St. Luke, the first chapter. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of sal salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David." And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I am not, I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee 
shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. The sixth lesson comes from the second chapter of St. Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spoused wife being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
The seventh lesson is also from the second chapter of Luke. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. lesson comes from St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief press priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for this it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the priests of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the men wise, inquired of them diligently. When time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. 
And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thanks be to God. lesson is from the beginning of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him, not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from John, God whose name was John. He came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness to the light. That was the true light, which lighteth everyone, which cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave them power to become the children of God. Even to them who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we have beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our newborn Savior. Don't you just love Christmas? I mean the decorating and the 
baking and the shopping and the wrapping of gifts and the family gatherings and the 24 hours a day Christmas music and the cheerful people wearing ugly sweaters. <laughs> no? Well, I know some of you love Christmas. I have it on good authority that you own ugly sweaters. But some of you do not love Christmas, and that's okay. Because to be honest, Christmas isn't always the most wonderful time of the year, despite what the song says. Christmas is fraught with emotions that can be downright painful to navigate. And it seems like the pandemic has just made it worse. So if you're feeling kind of grinchy tonight, I'm gonna give you a pass. But for kids, for kids, it's a different story. I was very surprised in 2018 when I read a new survey that came out that asked children if they hated Christmas. Guess what percentage? What percentage of kids hate Christmas? Zero. Zero percent. What are the three top things that kids love about Christmas? Number one, no school. It's good for teachers too, right? Number two, the presents, of course. And number three, time with family and friends. Ah, yes, for kids, Christmas is just a magical, wonderful time. So what happened to us adults? When did we get so jaded? And more importantly, how in the world are we going to survive Christmas this year? Well, lucky for you, I have some advice. For starters, I recommend the regular use of humor. I myself have been laughing all the way through this season by collecting Christmas jokes and memes. My favorite genre, cats crashing crushes. Have you heard of this? You might have even seen it on my own Facebook feed. Cats, you know, they like to be in the middle of things. Like whatever you're doing, they kind of want to squeeze themselves up in there. So if you set out a nativity scene, it is ultimately irresistible unto cats. I mean, all those little people they can knock over, barns just cat-sized, and hay they can snuggle on in. Of course they're in there. I love to laugh at these pictures. The internet is lit up with them. Google it, you'll see. Lots of cats and crushes. There was even one where the cat had evicted a very distressed looking baby Jesus so the cat herself could nestle down into the manger. And this brings me to my second piece of very important advice. Put yourself into the Christmas story as our feline friends are wont to do. Put yourself in, imagine, for example, you put yourself into the shepherd's shoes. Well, sandals, actually. <laughs> as we just heard from the Gospel of Luke. When Jesus is born, the shepherds are just out in the field, hanging out with their sheep, you know, abiding like the dude. And then, out of the blue, lo, an angel of the Lord appears unto them, and the glory of the Lord shines round about them. Awesome, right? Right? We love to hear the scripture in church. Not awesome for them. Not at all. They are afraid. In the King James Version, it says they are sore afraid. That can't be good. And so... They are afraid. One of the funniest moments in our Christmas program film was the scene where the shepherds scream exaggeratorily because the angel has appeared. And I know it's over the top. Yes, it's over the top, but well, it's good filmmaking. <laughs> but it's not that far from the truth. The real shepherds are terrified. They are terrified because they're just Regular country folks, they are not fancy party goers that own ridiculous sweaters. They're just normal people. And so if an angel, an angel of the Lord shows up and speaks to them, it must mean they are in serious trouble. Like they're going to get smited or something. That's what angels do. So the shepherds, I believe, 
are well within their rights to totally freak out like our fine young actors. But as it turns out, they're not in trouble. Quite the opposite. The angel shows up to bring good news. Despite their, their low lot in life, the angel tells them they, they've not been forgotten. God has heard their cries, their generations of cries, and God has at long last sent them a savior, a savior which is Christ the Lord, a liberator who brings joy to all people, not just the rich and powerful, but also the ordinary people like them. So this is good news, my friends. Now, you've probably heard that shepherd passage a million times. Linus recites it every year in the Charlie Brown Christmas special. But if we crash the crush like the cats, as I suggested, we put ourselves into the story and really imagine that the angel is talking directly to us, saying, fear not, I bring you good news. I think we can see that it is good news. It's great news. It's life-changing news that we can never hear often enough. We have not been forgotten, my friends. I mean, by the state of the world, we might wonder. But this ancient scripture affirms that the Savior has been born for us, and that, that God is with us, all of us, even if we lack sufficient Christmas cheer, that in the incarnation, God reveals how important we are. How important we are because God is willing to come to us to show us how loved we are. Fear not. No matter what is going on in our lives, this story tells us God is with us. We are not alone. We also heard that beautiful poetic passage from John's Gospel, which explains that from Christ's fullness, we have all received grace. And not just grace, grace upon grace. It's like this super abundance of God's grace, God's love. It's just poured out upon us, and it's ours. So my question for you tonight is can you Receive it. Can you open your heart this Christmas Eve to let the good news in? To let it in, to realize that you are loved. You are loved beyond your wildest dreams. Can you be overwhelmed with grace upon grace? I know it's not easy for us adult-like adults, you know, because we're very, very smart and very rational. And this kind of lavish love, it's absolutely irrational. God is so irrationally loving, it doesn't even make sense to us. So this leads me to my third and final piece of advice for you, and that is to approach it like a child. Because remember, 0% of them hate Christmas. They know how to do this. John says that because Christ has come, he gives us all the power to become the children of God. That's what you are, born of God. So just let your little inner child come out and play. Approach it with that childlike awe and wonder that this is so great. Can it possibly be for me? I love the candlelight Christmas Eve service, as I'm sure you do too, which is why you're here. In the warm light, when we turn off all the other lights and we just have our candles, everything just seems different. We do this ritual to affirm that we believe that the light of God is stronger than the darkness. And maybe in that moment you can get a moment of genuine peace in your heart. And when we finally get to that candle lighting portion of the program, I know that's what you're all waiting for, so I'm going to hurry up here. I advise you to come as a child. And I don't mean play with the wax or light your bulletin on fire. I mean come as a child. 
allow yourself to receive the love that you need right now. I know you need love. Just let it in. Because the Christmas message is this. You will find it. You will find all the love you need. You will find grace upon grace. So yes, the, the night is long and the darkness is deep and the sweaters are ugly. And the struggle to endure the holiday season is real, but on this night, on this holy night, my friends, let us celebrate that light has come into the world, the true light, for you and for me. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor this holy night and always. Amen. <laughs>